from the south, huh? Man, we glad you here today. Another AMA. Welcome to South Harm, and we glad you here today. Hey everyone, welcome back to the South Harvard Dynasty Team Review Show, where you have a chance to purchase a team review from the team over at South Harmon and get some advice and guidance um, from one of your teams that you might be interested in getting reviewed. Um, if you do not know me, I am Eric Vanek. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Vanek NFL. Um, and I'm also the host of America's Game right here on South Harmon. Um, if you'd like to purchase um, your own team review, please go to DynastyTeamReview.com, uh, the little link above there, and you can sign up to have um, either myself, Mike, Adam, or Koopa review a team for you. You can also join um, join us with yourself on the video, um, and we you can answer us or uh, ask us questions. Uh, about your team, where you would go, where we would go with it, stuff like that as well. Any kind of questions that you may have for yourself, we'll be more than happy to um, answer those for you. Um, the price points for each person are different, so check out the website there um, for the pricing for each person. Um, but today, uh, we got our first one up here is going to be one for our Savage members, uh, Slemno. He has uh, brought up, bought a team review, and I'm going to go over it here today with you guys and go over it. Uh, special instructions for this league that he left us. Uh, so any like non-standard scoring settings for any kind of league that he wanted to provide for us. It is a 1.75 tight end premium league. You're going to start 11 players. There's a 34-man roster, excuse me, and 6 point per passing touchdowns um, how does he envision this team's future he did a productive struggle coming out of the draft um, and wants to become a contender here in 2024 and any other information he provided us uh, he would let us know that the league is in year two he pick hoarded out of the startup he dealt three mid late picks for Josh Allen um, I'm guessing last year and then he took CJ Stroud at 106 in the rookie draft so he has Josh Allen and CJ Stroud which is awesome um, he also recently dealt Kyler Murray, and he got the 107 pick in 2024, the 112, Daniel Jones, and Christian Kirk, which I think is a pretty good trade for you, honestly. Um, just kind of looking at your team, you already had Josh Allen and Stroud. Um, we're going to get into your other draft picks that you have already. But yeah, getting 107, you're getting one of those top seven players in this draft, in my opinion. You got the three quarterbacks of Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels, and then you also have the three receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze, and Brock Bowers. In a 1.75 premium league, I think it's okay to have Bowers um, in that discussion, and we'll get into that here in a second. Um, and then you also got, you know, Daniel Jones. He's still a quarterback in this league. He's probably still going to be the quarterback here for the Giants this coming season just based off of... The money that they owe him like it's very hard to get out of that so i think daniel jones has at least one more year there um hopefully with some better weapons as well as they have the sixth overall pick and then christian kirk and then in this format um i'll explain here in a, in a moment why that is such a good pick to our good pickup in, in christian kirk as well to get him and add it into that deal so um so what i want to first bring up here and show you guys um, i'm going to pull up our warp tool by koopa so let me go ahead and pull up the warp tool here for everybody. All right. So here, here's Koopa's warp tool that he has uh, provided us on the website. If you'd like to become um, a warp member, uh, you can go ahead and sign up on the website at southharmonff.com and go ahead and purchase the warp tool. You can purchase it for $6.90 a month, or you can do the whole year for $69 as well. Uh, it's a great tool. I mean, you get a lot of different info on this. You can kind of see where in your certain leagues, you know, this is going to work for you. So as you can see on here, choose your platform, Sleeper MFL. Uh, this is on Sleeper right now. Um, I have his username in there, Slemno. He gave us the league name. Um, and this is the uh, warp for this league. So I've already calculated the warp and did all that for you guys. So it'll pop up here in a second once I get into it. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty simple and easy. So what is the warp tool? It's just kind of showing you the positions in your league that matter. The wins over replacement is what warp means. And what it is, you obviously want to get more wins over the, uh, just an average replacement type player. So we're going to check that out here. So kind of looking here first. Um, at the quarterback position, and we're going to see the warp for the quarterback position. So you can see here, 
like obviously 2.8 wins over replacement was Josh Allen. Jalen Hurts at 2.6. Dak Prescott 2.57. Uh, Lamar Jackson, 2.45. Jordan Love, 2.2. Uh, Brock Purdy, a 2. Uh, CJ Stroud's in here. Uh, I think he was... Uh, there he is. He was 11, 1.78. So you have CJ Stroud, who is only going to go up from here. I would expect him to be more in this 2 range, probably where Brock Purdy is next year. And then obviously you have the warp quarterback to own, and that's Josh Allen as well on this team. So we already know he has Allen and Stroud. He's looking really good at quarterback. And you can see here, like... You know, you get up to here to Matt Stafford at a 1.563 warp. Um, you know, getting one and a half warp is pretty nice. But after 16 here, it drops down 17, 1.2. 1 1.2 1 .2 here for Justin Fields. 1.2 for Geno Smith. 1.0 for Kirk Cousins. Like, obviously, you know, some of these guys were injured and missed some time. Um, but right here is where that little drop off is um and then as you can see it just goes lower and lower and lower as we go as you get into these shitty quarterbacks um all right so now we're going to look uh next position running backs and see what running backs matter in this league and as you can see here's the running backs compared to the quarterback so there's no point per carry or anything like that in this league it's just standard you know ppr and you're not getting anything uh crazy bonus wise there for running backs but as you can see christian mccaffrey 3.148 warp so he's obviously the alpha dog uh right now at the positions that we've looked at of king of warp right now in this league so having christian mccaffrey is a big deal i mean look at the jump from you know 3.1 to raheem moster who's second at 2.2 he's almost a full game you know warp game per better than number two overall so that's how much christian mccaffrey means and that's probably for a, a lot of our leagues that are out there so you got mostert um you see how these quarterbacks like just how much more of a win over replacement they mean than just you know these top five running backs so you have etn Brees hall rashad white joe mixon um jameer gibbs all that so you could kind of see like right here when i talked about it, matt stafford at 16 they're still more important than every single running back just about um and then you know the running backs here okay so we had quarterback 17 Derek Carr well right above it is Brian Robinson he meant more in warp than the quarterback did in Derek Carr so this is that point I was talking about where it just those quarterbacks are just eh they're okay you might want to you know check these running backs out they can they actually kind of mean a little bit more than some of those quarterbacks do all right, next up, I'm going to bring up the wide receivers here. And as you can see in this, wide receivers mean a ton in this league. They're on par with these quarterbacks, and they're definitely um, you know, a little bit better than these elite running backs. And then they stay consistently above the running backs all the way through. So what that tells me in this league, this is a start 11 league, and I believe you can start up to two, I think it's three receivers and three flex. I want to be filling those positions with wide receivers as much as I possibly can, just because of the warp difference that they provide for me. Um, and there's so many more that are going to be provided. Here's Kurt, Curtis Samuel at you know a .679 warp. Um, you know, you come up to these running backs here, 0 0.883 Singletary, 0 0.780 for Aaron Jones, 751 for Devin Achain, um, 713 for uh, Alexander Madison. Like, yeah, Curtis Samuel is just a little bit below that warp wise, but their just value is so much more than these running backs. And as you can see up here at the top receiver, CD Lamb at a three, uh, Tyree Kill, 2.9. Amam and Ross St. Brown, 2.4. Keenan Allen, 2.3. A.J. Brown, 2.1. So you can see how much valuable these wide receivers are. And, the, like, they're right on par with these elite quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson um, is a 2.45. And Keenan Allen's a 2.38, warp-wise. So you could see just how super valuable these wide receivers are compared to all the other positions. So um, as we get into this, you're going to hear me talk about why wide receiver is more important than how I'd be structuring this team. Um, and then lastly, let's take a look at the tight ends. And remember, this is a 1.75 per catch uh, tight end premium. So you'd expect these tight ends to be way up there, right?
click that open look how far these tight ends are down here in the orange uh yes your elite ones are going to matter so tj hawkinson was number one in this league kelsey uh evan ingram sam laporta david and joku you know these guys are all above a two warp so these guys are super important there's gonna be five six seven eight guys that are gonna be you know pretty important to you i would argue like once you get down maybe kittle at 1.8 is nice uh commit that's kind of where i'm at like a 1.6 yeah sure it matters but look how just further you know down they are compared to these elite receivers and these running backs and stuff so you're getting a quite a bit of drop here from these tight ends so it shows me that tight end outside to like these top six seven really does not matter too much to me unless they are you know they're going to be elite tight ends so this is the warp for this league um, another thing i wanted to show you guys uh the adjusted roster construction for this league so this is going to tell you um warp calculated optimal roster construction so it's showing you that you want to have about four quarterbacks five running backs three tight ends and the rest wide receivers um you probably you know these are like um koopa says here take all of these with a grain of salt you may want to optimize differently to account for injuries in league markets so obviously that's important to think about as well so there it is the warp for this league um that we're going to be looking over for slim now um, next one I want to show you guys is the lab that is also on South Harm at FF.com. Uh, so I'm going to stop that here for a second and I'm going to pull up um, the lab here for you guys. Okay, there we go. So here is the lab website that you're going to go to um, on the South Harmon website. This is what it looks like when you open it up. Now, this is only for sleeper uh, leaks right now. So uh, I'm going to type in Slemno's name for sleeper here. Hit submit. All right, and it's going to pull up um, all of this. So when it first pulls up, actually, it comes up under players first. So I'm going to do it how you guys would see it when you open it up. So this is going to be all of his player shares, um, and it's going to calculate these all for your league. So how many player shares of these guys that he owns right now in a lot of his leagues. Uh, you get your ownership percentages here. And then if you click on their names, you'll see what leagues you own those players in as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is going to go up here to this little drop down here and go to leagues and that's going to pull up all of slam those leagues that we're going to go over here um, so we know it's the oops all dgens league that he is wanting us to review here so i'm going to click that and it opens it up with his team here on the right hand side and uh, these are all of his league mates here on the left hand side that we can look at so um, first i want to go through basically all your positions and just kind of talk about what you have on your team right now uh, so, obviously, we talked about it a little bit ago. You have Josh Allen as your starting quarterback, and your super flex is C.J. Stroud. Now, if you look at my rankings or a lot of other people's rankings, Josh Allen is probably in the top two for quarterbacks in most people's rankings, and C.J. Stroud is anywhere from one to six in people's quarterback rankings for Dynasty. So you have two top six quarterbacks in a super flex league, that is 100% awesome. You're hitting a home run there to start with your roster. Love, love, love having two elite quarterbacks personally. And as you can see on the warp, you know, you have two of those super elite quarterbacks starting for you every single week, and they're putting up these massive warp seasons for you. You're way ahead of the field compared to most. Uh, you know, that random guy that might have Lamar Jackson, but his second quarterback's Derek Carr you're getting a massive advantage over that guy for sure. So love having those two elite quarterbacks like that. Now let's look at the rest of your quarterbacks that you have on your roster. So I'm going to scroll down here and look through your quarterbacks. Um, okay, so you have Kyle Trask. You know, it's it's hard for to roster Kyle Trask right now. Like, I get it with Baker Mayfield. is probably going to re-sign with Tampa. I put that at, like, an 80% chance that Baker Mayfield's back in Tampa Bay. Uh, they're going to have to get, pay up and get him a nice deal. But Trask just hasn't really played. This is going to be, like, his fourth year. It's probably the end of his rookie contract actually coming up um, to think about it. So... Is he somebody that I really want to roster right now? Probably not. I can feel like I can get away from him and maybe pick up a wide receiver or a running back that I could stash instead of Kyle Trask. Uh, Taylor Heineke, 
Another guy, like, we've kind of seen the best from him, I think, with Washington. And then last year in Atlanta, it was not very good at all. So I think I personally would be okay with cutting Heineke. But if you want to wait to see, like, maybe where he lands, if he lands up behind uh, a quarterback that's, you know, a little injury prone, okay, I could maybe see hanging on to him just in case. Um, i probably put it at, like, a 55-45 situation on whether I keep him or not right now. Cooper Rush, that's one I can definitely go ahead and cut. I would rather cut him and go ahead and pick up, you know, some random running back right now. Zach Wilson, I think that's another guy. Obviously, he's got a lot of talent. He's probably not available in most leagues right now, like via the waiver wire. So you're probably going to have to hold on to him right now. But if things just don't work out for him this offseason, uh, he goes somewhere where he's just not in a good spot, then I'm totally fine with cutting him. Um, but if he goes to a spot where, hey, there's an outside chance, like if he just does well, he could maybe start a few games there. Okay, I can see holding on to him. Daniel Jones, who you talked about, that's a fine third quarterback that you can have as a bye week replacement for Stroud and Allen. Obviously, you're going to need um, a quarterback there when they're on bye. And then Sam Darnold you have as well. That's one of the better backups in the league for sure. So hopefully he resigns with San Francisco or whatnot. I really like having Darnold on this team. So that is a good one. Uh, let's go back up here. and Let's take a look at your running backs. So Tajay Spears there. So obviously with Derrick Henry, most likely going to be gone from the Titans this offseason. Tajay Spears is going to be one of the featured pieces there for the Titans. I don't know if he's going to be the starter. Uh, but he's going to be a very important piece for this offense. So definitely like having Tajay Spears there. Um, and I think you can get away with like Tajay Spears and uh, Zach Charbonnet as your starters. Uh, as, you, as I said earlier in this um, video, like the wide receivers, I want to be filling all these spots with wide receivers as much as I can. So I'm not like too worried about having like... No, like, oh, I got to have a Saquon Barkley. I got to have a Brees Hall. I got to have a Bijan Robinson. Eh, yeah, sure, it'd be nice to have those guys. They're great warp difference-making running backs, but not necessarily, like, where you could build your team or where the important part of your team is. I think you can get more than, you know, be fine with Tajay Spears and Zach Charbonnet. Uh, so both of those guys, Charbonnet, you know, obviously a new offense coming in there. Uh, Mike McDonald is a coach. So, I mean, I don't know what kind of offense Mike, Mc Mike McDonald is going to have his coordinator run, but coming from Baltimore, they've always used multiple backs. So Charbonnet being there um, with Ken Walker, I would feel Charbonnet is going to definitely get some work. He's not going to be um, a starter or anything, a warp difference maker, but he's somebody that you could definitely play, and he can get you maybe he gets you 8 to 10 points a game, something like that. Zamir Weiss, he's very interesting. So if Josh Jacobs does not re-sign with Vegas, I really like Zamir White a lot this year. I think he could he proved those last month or so when he did start that he could be a workhorse and pretty much handle a Josh Jacobs role. Is he as good as Josh Jacobs? No, not at all. But I think he is 80% of Josh Jacobs. So having a Zamir White on your team and hoping that he starts, that could be somebody that you pair with Tajay Spears to start every single week. Um, this is what happens with these running backs. We're just hoping that these guys get a shot, either through injuries, you know, the guy ahead of him leaves in free agency. That's why we kind of accumulate these NERB on a 53 guys. Um, you just never know when they're going to get a chance. And when Zamir White got his chance last year, he actually did pretty damn good. Um, um, he was like at least over 15 points per game in a um, couple weeks there. So uh, really like Zamir White holding on to him and just see what happens there. Um, Deuce Vaughn, eh, that's just a, any RB on a 53 type guy. I think he could get a little bit more of a run maybe here in his second year once they clear out the back room a little, uh, a little bit more. He didn't get much run this year, but I do like like having him Emmanuel Wilson that's another one I like he was actually getting used quite a bit there in the playoff games um this postseason with uh, AJ Dillon hurt Emmanuel Wilson kind of took over there I was the second back they had Patrick Taylor there Patrick Taylor's you know he's a jag he's a you know jack of all trades master of none type player uh but Emmanuel Wilson man even in the preseason he really showed off this season uh, that he could play in this league. So I like having Emmanuel Wilson. He could be the backup there in Green Bay this year. So I like holding on to him. 
Tank Bigsby, very, very rough season for Tank Bigsby. Um, you're kind of just hoping that, you know, he can bounce back maybe with a full off season, get his body right, get all that right, uh, that maybe he can bounce back a little bit here because the talent is there for sure. Um, they just got to be able to use him a little bit better. So we'll see what happens there with Tank Bigsby. You're not going to trade him like... What's the best you're going to get for him? A third? Like at that point, for a third, I might as well just hold on to the guy. Uh, next up, Tyler Goodson. He showed off a little bit here in Indianapolis towards the end of the season uh, when Zach Moss and Jonathan Taylor, those guys were all hurt there. Um, I thought Goodson finally played well. I was glad he finally got his opportunity because this is a guy I really liked. Back to his Green Bay days when he first came into the league, like, in the preseason, he was a rock star, man. Um, he was one of the best preseason running backs that I had seen, but he never got his chance here in the league. So I am glad uh, that Tyler Goodson finally got a shot here. Uh, so I'm I'm fine hanging on to him and kind of see what happens. Chris Rodriguez, another guy who came on there at the end of the year after some injuries. Like he had a three touchdown game, I believe, uh, towards the end of the season. He was really good. New regime coming in there with Dan Quinn in Washington. So new offense there. Uh, Antonio Gibson might be leaving there, so he'll be the backup to Brian Robinson. And I think this is a good one-two punch with Rodriguez and Robinson. Definitely a guy I would hold on to. Uh, next running back, uh, Michael Carter. So Michael Carter got traded there to Arizona late last year, and I think this is a perfect complement to James Conner. Carter can do a little bit of passing game work and run the ball a little bit too. Conner's going to need a little bit of breath here and there. Um, so I really like Carter. I think this is a good little spot and somebody that you could probably get away with starting um, – you know, a few weeks here and there. It was like a bye week replacement, and he can get you your 8 to 10 points that you're kind of hoping for from that RB2 spot. Um, and then other running backs, Jaleel McLaughlin is your last running back. Really like him. This is definitely a Sean Payton guy. So Sean Payton just has running backs that he's always had that always produce on his team. Pierre Thomas comes to mind. There's a few others that um, he's, he's had over the years in New Orleans. So Jaleel McLaughlin was a guy that he's kept around that he really liked during the preseason. We heard a lot about him. Um, I talked a little bit about him on my podcast. That's definitely a guy I'm going to hold on to. And that's probably somebody that you're going to be able to start uh, a week or two during the season as well. So uh, running backs, like, you don't have a superstar or anything like that, but I think you're you're fairly solid there. Um, I'd give it like a you know a C uh, of what your depth looks like there for me. Now wide receiver, so this is going to be the most important part of your team. Uh, like I talked about on the warp, I want to be starting as many of these wide receivers as possible in these spots that I can. So obviously you're starting off here with Justin Jefferson, the elite of the elites. Top three dynasty wide receiver easily. So love having Justin Jefferson there. He is going to be an absolute warp difference maker there for you. Looking at your next wide receivers up here, uh, Christian Kirk, who you got in that trade for Kyler Murray. Perfect. Love having Christian Kirk there. I think he's going to be um, somebody that you can start and rely on every single week. You know, he's not going to be putting up... 15 to 20 points per game for you, but he's going to probably be in that 10 point per game range, if not a little bit higher every single week for you. So love having Christian Kirk there as one of your wide receivers. That was a great get in that trade for you. So nice job on him. To Mario Douglas, um, rookie that really came on last year and basically took over like the number one receiver role for New England there once Kendrick Bourne got hurt. Uh, DeMario Douglas came in and basically filled a little bit of that Jacoby Myers role um, that they lost. So I really like having DeMario Douglas. Am I counting on him as, to be my wide receiver three weekly? No, but as a flex play? Absolutely. I think DeMario Douglas can definitely be a guy that you can flex weekly for yourself. So love having him. Uh, next up, Michael Wilson. So, you know, with Michael Wilson, he's got a shot here to be the wide receiver two for Arizona next year. Um, if Hollywood Brown does not resign and the Cardinals end up drafting Marvin Harrison, Michael Wilson could be the number two there. 
Um, now, if they re-sign Hollywood Brown and draft Marvin Harrison, Michael Wilson's still going to have a shot on this team as a, a solid number three receiver. But is it going to be somebody I want to count on weekly? Probably not. So uh, it's kind of going to depend on here what happens in the offseason with the Cardinals. But I do like Michael Wilson and his talent. Um, like him a lot. So that's a guy I would definitely hold on to. Um, and hopefully it's somebody that you can you know, throw in in a bye week replacement kind of situation. Khalil Shakir. So obviously you have Josh Allen um, from earlier. Having Khalil Shakir here, good spot for him uh, to own him, especially with, you know, having Josh Allen. Gabe Davis is a free agent this coming offseason. He's probably going to get paid pretty money. So Gabe Davis is going to be a guy that might not be there next year. So Shakir could walk into the number two receiver job. Um, they could draft a receiver as well, so maybe that guy goes over Shakir, but kind of in that slot third wide receiver role, I think Shakir has proven himself to be a pretty good target there. So that's another guy uh, maybe in the same range as Michael Wilson is somebody that you can kind of count on as a bi week replacement kind of starter. So I kind of I like having Shakir on this team as well, so doing good there. Uh, next wide receiver up, Tyler Scott. I mean, he didn't really do too much with Chicago. He has a chance to be like the number three or four receiver here. They're probably going to have to draft another receiver there with Chicago or sign somebody. So Tyler Scott is borderline roster clogger. Um, probably is a roster clogger, to be honest with you. Um, so if you can maybe drop Tyler Scott to pick up somebody else, if there's really not anybody to pick up, I'm okay with holding on to him. But he's probably one of your first cuts if you need somebody. Rashad Bateman. Uh, so Rashad Bateman, man, he just can't stay healthy. He's been beat up a little bit here. He played most of last season, but I don't know if he was fully healthy, to be honest. Um, Odell played over him quite a bit. Obviously, Zay Flowers was over him. Uh, but what are you going to get for Rashad Bateman? No one's giving you a second-round pick for him. What's somebody going to give you, the 308, 309 for Rashad Bateman? At that point, with his talent, his pedigree, I'd rather just take the shot that Rashad Bateman can kind of turn it around. He has an offseason to get fully healthy again. Uh, he's not, like, dealing with some major injury or anything like that. So Rashad Bateman, I think, is a guy that you're just going to kind of have to hold on to right now. And maybe he becomes somebody that you can do as a bye week replacement starter. Uh, that's kind of what your best bet is. Maybe he you know, gets it back on track and becomes a weekly starter for you. That would be awesome with Lamar Jackson there. So Bateman, you're probably just going to have to hold on to and wait and see. Uh, next wide receiver up, Trey Tucker. Yeah, he had a couple spots um, down with the uh, Raiders this offseason or um, this uh, regular season where he had a couple touchdowns. Probably a roster clogger, though. They're going to have to find some other receivers, kind of in the same vein as, as Tyler Scott. I'm okay with holding on to him to kind of see what happens. Uh, but if you need a roster spot, you could probably cut him. Uh, Andre Osavis from the Bengals. Um, I like what I saw from him uh, this offseason. Now, if T. Higgins ends up staying here, then Osavis you could probably cut. Uh, but I do like the talent. I do like a little bit of the upside that he does bring. Um, if he ends up being the number two there, if they don't, you know, trade, if they trade T Higgins, Tyler Boyd could be gone. Osavis could be, you know, a big part of this offense this off season. So I do like holding on to him and kind of seeing what happens Two two Atwell. I mean, he started off the season really strong. Um, he had a couple best ball type weeks there in the beginning of the season where he was in your best ball lineup. If you owned him, uh, now towards down towards the end of the season, he got hurt and Demarcus Robinson and came in, and Demarcus Robinson was on an absolute fucking heater. So Atwell kind of got pushed to the side there, but I still like the talent here. I think they still know how to use him. I'll still hold on to him and use him as a bye week replacement type of uh, wide receiver. Um, and then your next receiver, Rondale Moore. I mean, just, like I said, it kind of just depends on the, the season here. You're not going to get much for him, like... I don't even know if somebody's going to give you a third-round pick for Rondell Moore. So you might as well just hold on to him, and hopefully things click here. Maybe with a new um, offseason here, maybe they find a new role for Rondell Moore to use. But it, it is what it is at this point with Rondale. Um, probably somebody that you can just hold on to and see what happens here. Um, and that is it for your wide receivers. Um, tight end. So let's go up here. Now you have Dalton Kincaid uh, with Josh Allen. So like I said in the, with the 1.75 tight end premium, this is a guy, this is what I want to do. I want to 
pair up my quarterback and my tight end if possible, especially if it's a, a tight end who maybe in the warp range is like maybe just a smidge outside of it like Dalton Kincaid was last year. But the arrow is only pointing up for Kincaid here with Josh Allen, especially if Gabe Davis leaves. Um, I really like having Kincaid paired up with Josh Allen. So I really like that. And I think you can be more than fine here at tight end with just starting Kincaid every single week. Um, your next tight end is Greg Dulcich. Had a rough season. Um, you know, if, I, if somebody going to trade for him right now, probably not. You're only getting a third. And at that point, might as well just hold on to him and see what happens because he does have some talent. If Sean McVay can find a way to get him on the field and use him and he's fully healthy um, after this pretty much lost season, then I'm willing to wait and see here what happens with Dulcich. Like, the reports out of camp weren't very good, and then he got hurt and was just always constantly hurt this season. So it's not great, but you might as well just hold on to him and kind of see if he can get to his, his value back for you a little bit. Uh, Cameron Latu, total roster clogger. He's not anything special. I would be cutting him to find a receiver or running back I could pick up instead. Um, and why I say that is you look at the tight end warp, there's really like seven or eight tight ends that even matter. And the rest are just dime a dozen. Um, and Cameron Latu is going to be that, and he's going to be at the very, very low end of that. So cut him, make some roster spot, uh, for a running back or receiver. Josh Oliver. Um, so I understand why you're still holding on to him with Hawkinson, maybe missing some time to start the year. Oliver could be the starter there. Um, I think he's probably a roster clogger. I would say 75% he's a roster clogger, but on that outside chance that he is the starter to start the season, okay, I can see maybe holding on to him and maybe you can get some trade value out of that. Maybe you can get a third round pick if he is the starter to start like maybe the first six weeks. Uh, that would be the only way I would be keeping Oliver right now. Uh, Brenton Strange, so second round pick. Evan Ingram signed that new contract there with uh, Jacksonville. So Brenton Strange, I just don't see him being a warp difference maker. So I would be okay with cutting him if you can find another uh, player. And then uh, that was it for your tight end. So, yeah, your backup tight ends, you can maybe, you know, go about finding another decent one that you could use. Um but, yeah, some of these other tight ends are just kind of roster cloggering for you. So you can go ahead and maybe find some more tight ends that m really matter to you. I think you only really need to have two, three tight ends at most. Um, so you could definitely use some depth help there at tight end. Um, and lastly, your draft picks. So you have the 101 draft pick the 107 draft pick and the 112 draft pick so what am i doing with these picks on this team so 101 for me i'm going for marvin harrison jr on this team you have the quarterbacks right now with josh allen and cj stroud like i said two top six dynasty quarterbacks right now so yeah having caleb williams would be nice but he you're gonna have to sit one of these guys every single week so having Marvin Harrison Jr., where you have to start, ideally, I want to start six receivers. So you have three receiver spots, three flex spots. And I want all three of these receiver spots, obviously, with a receiver, and all three of these flex spots with a wide receiver in them is my ideal build. So for me, if I am you at that 101, I am taking um, Marvin Harrison Jr. Now... I don't know who has the 102. I'd have to look through here. But let's say that 102, their second quarterback, is Kenny Pickett or somebody like that. Like somebody that's not very stable. And you know, hey, they're going to, they want Caleb Williams. Or maybe you can talk to that person and find out some intel on who they would take at 101 or something like that. And maybe they want Caleb. Okay, maybe you could trade back a spot with them, let them come up and grab Caleb. And at your 102 spot, you could take Marvin Harrison. You can maybe get an extra 20, 25 second out of there for moving back one spot, something like that. That's something I would explore doing. But if I know that they're not going to take Caleb Williams or it's kind of iffy, uh, no, no thanks. I, I think I'm just taking Marvin Harrison Jr. here no matter what. Um, unless I can move down a spot and I know he's going to take Caleb, something like that. Um, I can maybe pick up, a, like I said, an extra second. Uh, 107. So this is a little interesting pick as well. So I mentioned the top seven players 
in this draft, the three quarterbacks, the three receivers, and Brock Bowers at tight end. Um, so in your case, I am hoping that Brock Bowers goes before you at 105, 106, whatever. Hopefully one of these teams um, values that tight end spot a little bit more than you should, especially given the warp in this league. Like I think Brock Bowers is going to be a solid player, um, but I am thinking... Uh, he's not a warp difference maker, most likely not. I guess it kind of depends on his um, where he goes. So if he like, you know, at somebody in your league is going to like Brock Bowers a lot more than you should, especially in this format. We saw on the warp chart uh, what that tight end spot means. So what I would be looking to do is if I, one of the receivers does not fall to me here, Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors, whoever, if one of those guys does not fall to me here, um, then I would trade the pick if it's Brock Bowers or something like that. Um, if it's one of the receivers, I'm totally fine taking Neighbors or Dunze pretty easily here at the 107 spot. Uh, but if not, you know, I'm looking to trade this 107 pick to somebody who wants to come up and take Brock Bowers. Um, you know, can I get a Jalen Waddle type? Can I get a Devontae Smith type uh, for that pick to for the rights for somebody to go up and take Brock Bowers? Um, that's kind of what I would be looking at to do. And I think that's be a smart move for you. Kind of to see if you could get a wide receiver there um, for that pick. 112 and 202, I kind of look as the same because of how deep this wide receiver class is. Like you could probably get, um, you know, like a Troy Franklin type here. You could get Ladd McConkey here. You could get... Uh, you know, Keon Coleman here, Brian Thomas Jr. You know, these guys are going to probably be here at your picks. And that's kind of where I want to take those picks. Um, you could also look at a running back as well, I think, because I think this is kind of like the range where the running backs are going to start to go, depending on where they go. So you look at uh, Ray Davis, you look at Jonathan Brooks, you look at Braylon Allen. You know, I don't know who's going to be the the number one running back off the board yet. I mean, it's pretty wide open in the air right now. I don't think anybody knows um, who the best running back in this class is yet. Uh, but it, the NFL is going to tell us, hey, like we really like this guy. If they're going to draft him high, um, they might fall here to the one eleven two hundred two. So you do need a little bit of depth there at running back. So maybe you could use one of these picks on a running back. But if not, I'm taking these wide receivers, man. Like, there is a ton of wide receivers in this draft. So you're going to be looking at um, taking one of those guys. Like I said, you want to start as many wide receivers as possible. Uh, 303, 304, 401, 407 are kind of just their picks. You're going to take players that you like. You might be able to get a running back. You might be able to get a tight end, more receivers that you can stock up on. I'm kind of just taking players that I like that maybe, you know, I'm listening to the 4D chess guys. You're listening to me on America's Game. You're listening to other podcasts about some guys um, that could be valuable players in this league, and maybe you've fallen in love with a couple or you know a couple from your own scouting processes. That's kind of what I'll be using these picks on. Um I mean, you might be able to trade this like 303 and 304 to maybe get a veteran player that could help you out. It's like, can I go to 303 and I get, trying to think of like a, a good guy that you can get a running back that might have a a spot that you could use, like uh, kind of like Zeke Elliott was last year for the Patriots. That's the only one that came to my mind at the moment, but like a Zeke Elliott um, you know, players like that. Can I get one of those guys just to kind of fill in um, where I know they're going to have a pretty solid role uh, week to week that I could use. You know, you can maybe try trade your picks with that. Um, so you have two seconds in 2025. That's sweet. And then you have all your 2026 picks as well. So, yeah, man, like if you can get some of these picks um, as well, too, like can I trade this 304, 303? If there's nobody there you like, on the clock, just trade this for, uh, hey, any 2025 second gets this pick. So, you know, put it up in your in your league chat. Hey, 304 is available. I will take any 2025 20, second for it. Then you pile up these 2025 20, seconds for next year. So you can do that with these picks too. 
401. Hey, I will take a 2025 third for this 401. So I'm going to give it to you to, for the 401. Maybe for 407 too. Uh, you can maybe get that. You can pile up some picks for next year that you could use for ammo during the season to acquire some players. Because you, if you did that, trade 304 and got a future um, second, you're going to have three 2025 seconds to play with during the season to trade for a piece that you might eat. So that is another good one um, that you could use. Um, so, the, you know, kind of looking at your starting roster here. So I think Josh Allen, CJ Stroud, you're locked in there. That's nice. Uh, Spears and Charbonnet, Spears and Zamir White, whatever it is. I think you're pretty solid there. It's not too bad. It could definitely use a little bit of upgrading, but it's you can get by with this. Uh, wide receivers, you're going to be starting Justin Jefferson, you're going to be starting Christian Kirk, and you're going to be starting Martin Harrison Jr. That's going to be your three receivers right here in your three receiver spots. Demario Douglas bumps down to one of these guys, and then that 107 pick, can I trade for Devontae Smith or Chris Olave, Jalen Waddle, whatever it is, can I trade for one of those types of players? Um so I would hope you could, or you draft Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors there, and I'm starting one of those guys here. So there's your two receiver spots, Demario Douglas and the 107 pick here. Your 112 pick could probably go here as well if it's another receiver. Um, Samir White could start here for you, so, and you have the two... I'm sorry, uh, the 202 pick. So maybe that's another receiver that you've got in the rookie draft. You know, maybe that's a Troy Franklin or a Lad McConkey or something like that, somebody that you could start there as well. Or maybe somebody else you trade for, like in the veteran route of wide receivers that I was mentioning. So I think this is definitely a contender team, man. If you look at it here, you're going to have Josh Allen. I think the running backs are fine. I just mentioned your receiver core that you're going to have. Kincaid is a more than fine 1.75 tight end premium tight end that you can use. Um, your depth is a little weak, though. Like I said, with those other picks, um, you can just draft some players and hope you hit. Um, make up some better, you know, listen to my waiver wire podcast that I do every single week on South Harmon. Um, I'm going to be able to find you some guys in these deeper leagues that you can pick up maybe a week or two ahead of the masses, you know, and then you can find yourself a nice little gem there. You know, listen to my um, podcast during the off season uh, for training camp stuff. I found Jalen Warren the year before. I found Julio McLaughlin this year. I'm finding guys one or two a year that I'm finding that ends up becoming a, a piece that you could use during your season for your roster. So make sure you're listening to that as well. And you can pick up some of these guys, get some, get rid of the, some of this dead weight, your Cameron Latus, your Cooper Rushes, your Kyle Trask. You can get rid of these guys um, and go ahead and go find yourself, you know, guys who are going to have roles that you know are going to have roles. You can probably find running backs a little bit easier that way. Wide receivers, it's tough to figure out who's going to have a role right away um but like there's going to be some running backs that are available that are going to have some roles now you might have to wait until after free agency or after the draft to kind of see who's going to have those roles but kind of speculate like okay i know this guy can play in the nfl he's played in the nfl like uh like a dearness johnson type he was over tank bigsby most of the year last year like if they re-sign him, um, he's probably got the shot over Tank Bigsby right now to be the Jaguars' uh, RB2. And if ETN gets hurt, then Dearness Johnson's probably going to get a um, pretty decent amount of that work. So, like, he's probably available in some leagues. You could probably pick him up and easily drop, like, a Cooper Rush to pick up one of those guys. So, yeah, I think you're sitting in a, a really good spot here to um, contend in 2024. I think if you... Um, do that with your draft picks like I was talking about. You should be uh, set pretty good here. So um, appreciate you, Slemmo, for purchasing uh, this roster review. If you guys want to purchase your own roster review, dynastyteamreview.com up top there. Make sure you guys go sign up over there. We'll be more than happy to do these roster reviews with you guys. You can go ahead and join us as well. Be on the video with here. Ask us any questions that you have. And we'll be more than happy to help you guys out. We love doing this stuff. So uh, appreciate you guys uh, checking us out. And have a good day. We'll see you.